Decorators are a really cool part about Python that allow you to extend functions beyond their original functionality. They allow you to remove code duplication, but I mean, they could be used to do all sorts of crazy things. But they are also something that tends to trip people up quite a lot, especially people coming into Python for the first time. They look at a decorator and think, what the hell does that do? So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the process of creating a decorator from the ground up. So we're gonna be starting by creating a simple decorator, then we're gonna type in that decorator, then we're gonna create a parameterized decorator, and we're also gonna learn how to type in that as well. So you get the fundamentals of how they're built and also how to type in them, because type hinting them is a challenge in and of itself. <laughs> Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But with that out of the way, let's get decorating. So we already have some test code on the screen. This is just a little function for factorial and then you're running the factorial function. I'm actually going to change that to 100, not 1000 because the factorial of 1000 is quite a lot and that will prove problematic and we can do a print there like that. And this just provides some context uh, to create a decorator. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a timing decorator. This is quite a simple one to create. All it does is essentially time how long the function takes to run and then print that to the console and then everything else is completely unmodified. So it's a good one to start with. So first we need to import time and this will have our actual time utilities. And then we could do from func tools import wraps and we'll talk about what that does in a second. But to begin creating our decorator, you just need to know that they are normal functions. So we could do def timer, and then we pass a function through. So our decorator takes a function. And then we define another function inside that takes args and quarks. So in this instance, the function will be our factorial function, and our args and quarks will be the args and quarks of the factorial function. In this case, there's only the n, so the n will get passed to args and quarks will be empty, but that's the general idea. Uh, so we can do start equals time uh, dot perf counter ns. The perf counter ns just gets the number of uh, nanoseconds since the start of the program's execution. Outside of timer, it's the best thing to use. Uh, and then result equals func uh, args quarks. So we're now calling the function with inside our wrapper. We then end, uh, we basically just get the same again. Uh, and then we can do, uh, actually you could probably do, no, we'll do delta equals time dot perf counter ns minus start. That seems a bit cleaner to read to me. And then we can simply uh, print that our function dot name, there we go. Uh, took uh, delta and then bam, 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 just some string formatting, nanoseconds, because this is nanoseconds. And then we can return the result of the function. So this result will be the same as this result down here. And then from the timer, we can return our wrapper. And then from there, we can simply just decorate our factorial function with the timer decorator, and we are good to go. If I run this, ignore that. That was previous things that I've abandoned in this video. And we can see that our factorial took 7,875 nanoseconds and that the factorial of 100 is this. So a quick recap of what's going on. When we decorate this uh, function, uh, when it's called, the timer function is executed and the factorial function is passed in as this, which we've called func. You can call that whatever you want. We then define a wrapper in here. And again, you can call this whatever you want. I just always saw this as wrapper when I was learning about decorators. I think that's the most commonly used. You could use inner if that makes most sense to you, or you could completely troll everyone and call it something crazy. Um, it's <laughs> your prerogative. It's up to you. Uh, but inside this wrapper, we simply just um, you know do some time stuffs. We also run the function within it and then get the result out of it. We then just print the amount of time it took and we return the result. And then this return wrapper sets our factorial function to the wrapper. So that's the important thing about decorators. You're not actually executing this function. You're now executing this function here, which then calls our original function internally. So you could create a decorator 
that just didn't call the function if you really wanted to. But you can actually prove that it calls the wrapper uh, by printing, uh, oops, print factorial dot dunder name. And when we do that, we can see that it comes out with wrapper. So we are actually getting this function's name back out. If you don't want that to happen, we can use the wraps that I said I'd talk about earlier. So we can decorate our wrapper. And yes, it, it does get a bit introspective at this point. You can do wraps func. And what this will do is it will um, give our wrapper function the name and the doc string and probably various other attributes to the wrapper function. So now when we print factorial dot name, we will print factorial instead. And if you were to print factorial dot um, dunder doc, it would print the factorial's doc string and not either none or whatever you set this doc string to, if you happen to set it. So that's the basics of how decorators work and how to create them. I'm now going to type hint this. If you don't want to see type hinting and you just want to move on to the parameterized decorators, I have left timestamps in the description for you to skip forward and backwards. Uh, but time painting decorators is kind of an art in and of itself. So I thought I'd cover it and make this, uh, you know, a, a comprehensive video of sorts. Um, we are not going to be using Python 3.12's generics. One, because I think they're harder to parse, um, especially when you're trying to learn something new. And two, because MyPy doesn't support them. So we're going to be doing it the old way. Yay. Uh, so we can do from typing uh, import callable param spec and then type var. And then we can create p, which is a param spec name p, and ooh, r, sorry, which is a type var of type r. Um, so our p or our param spec will represent the args and the quags, and then our r will represent the return value for the function. So actually typing decorators, I tend to type them inside out. So I start with the inner function and then go out because I find that a bit easier. But for our args, we could do p.args and then uh, p.quags and then we can return out r. And what doing this allows us to do is it allows us to essentially inherit the type signature from or uh, inherit the function signature from the original function. So much like wraps allows us to use the original function name Param spec and then type vars allow us to use the original function signatures. So it will now realize, um, or statically typed, it will realize that we are passing in an integer and we're returning an integer. As you can see from this uh, type hint, it still understands that. Actually type hint in this function, we can simply just use what we have here. Uh, so we could do callable and then we take a param spec and then we return a return value and then we return a callable that takes the same param spec and returns the same return value because we're simply just running the function with the same inputs and we're returning the same output. We're just doing stuff around it. So we can share a function signature here. And now this is all fully typed. So if I were to do my pi double dash strict uh, simple.py, we will see that we have no issues in one source file. So that's a simple decorator. Now moving on to the parameterized one. I don't know what I've done there. Uh, we can just copy this and paste this over to here. So what I mean by a parameterized decorator is a decorator that you can pass arguments to. So if you wanted to set the units um, to something different, so say if you wanted to have it um, emit uh, milliseconds instead of nanoseconds, and what if we wanted to set the precision of our output, we can do that to three, for example. And uh, a, a parameterized decorator, also known as a decorator factory, will allow us to do that. So to actually do that, we need to first rename this to decorator, or you can uh, rename this anything you want. Again, this is a sort of pseudo standard, I'll call it. We need to indent this over. We need to wrap the whole thing in another function called timer. And we want to, if I bring my notes up, we want to set a unit here, string, and then we're going to set that as a default to nanoseconds. And we also want to set our precision as a keyword only argument to an integer, and we'll default that to zero. Uh, like that. And then in our delta, what we want to do, we actually want to define a series of units first up here. 
So if we set units here and then we set in a very specific order, nanoseconds, microseconds, milliseconds, and then seconds, and we can use that order to our advantage later. We can, uh, in our delta, we can change this. So we can divide by a thousand uh, to the power of units dot index unit. And what this will do, so if we uh, pass nanoseconds, it will divide it by one. So you get the same amount. If we want to pass um, microseconds, it will divide it by a thousand because there are a thousand nanoseconds in a microsecond, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can use the units.index to you know, come up with a smarter way of doing that. And then we can simply just pass the unit here. And then we can also pass the precision here. So that's a funky thing you can do in F strings. You can put an expression within the format expression or a variable within the format expression or however you want to talk about that. And then actually within our timer decorator, we then need to return, or our timer function, sorry, we need to return the decorator. So if we were to run that, if I were to run this without these keyword arguments, actually, we would get the exact same result as we did before where it does it in nanoseconds. If we were to say we want it in in, in milliseconds and we want the precision to be three, we now get it in the form of 0 0.007 milliseconds. So we can see that our arguments are taking effect. And what's happening here is that we pass the timer up and then we give it these arguments. So we're actually calling this function as soon as it's evaluated. So unit and precision are set internally. And then we have our decorator here. Um, and this decorator is then returned out the function immediately. So our, our factorial function is actually in a very similar state to it was here, where you have a, a decorated actual function. And then when it's run, the, the exact same process as before takes place, where the function is you know, replaced with this wrapper. And that's the only real difference that, you know, something is executed immediately and then this decorator just returns this essentially and then you can track the logic back from there if you wanted to type this it's really kind of annoying to do because uh, it looks very weird so i'm actually going to do this no we'll do it on the same line for now and let the auto formatter sort it out so going from inside out so we have this callable pr that is our wrapper and callable pr oh sorry our callable pr is our function and the same thing for the wrapper so this timer is returning a callable that takes a callable and returns a callable. So we can do that by doing callable and then within our brackets, it'd say it's taking a callable of PR and then it, the return type is a callable of PR. And this looks awful, but it is how you type parameterized decorators, unfortunately. Antony Wright's code recently made a good video talking about an easier way of doing this or a slightly less messy way of doing this. Um, that I watched, I was like, whoa, that's mental. So I'll link that somewhere in the cards or whatever. But this is how you would do it in its raw form. And that is pretty much the ins and outs of decorators. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out at all. And also let me know what sort of things you're planning to use decorators for. I would like to say a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Rashman III for being so generous. If you want to know how to implement OAuth 2 from scratch in Python, then go and watch last week's video where I covered that. I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.